On the morning of January the 5th of 2018, two masked machete-wielding robbers burst into the home of crypto trader Kieran Hamilton in Chatterton, Greater Manchester, England. Alerted by the commotion, 21-year-old Hamilton encountered the thugs who threatened him with the blades, demanding valuables and drugs. Hamilton, whom the thieves felt was reticent about parting with his possessions, was punched and sliced in the arm with a machete, sustaining a deep gash in his elbow that would require 12 stitches to mend. The crypto trader's young daughter was at the home, but she didn't see the thieving duo, who eventually made off with gold bracelets and a gold wedding ring, as well as Hamilton's phone, laptop, and his French bulldog, Rambo. Roughly a year after the violent home invasion, Hamilton recovered Rambo after someone had identified the ownership through the pet's microchip. During a 2020 interview with Vice, Hamilton admitted, I got stabbed because of my Instagram presence. The man recounted that he was making around £50,000 per month and further building his business, which also involved selling courses on crypto trading through social media. As Hamilton described it, Instagram provided a way for him to document his success. Some of the posts showed him in designer clothes, wearing luxury watches and going on shopping sprees or sailing holidays. Hamilton believed that while his Instagram had been the catalyst for the robbery, the assailants were acting on the erroneous impression that he was a drug dealer, which was why they'd pressed him for illegal substances. One of the men who'd robbed Hamilton left a balaclava at the address and was identified through DNA recovered from it as 27-year-old career criminal Corey Fricker. On June the 7th of 2018, he was found behind the wheel of a stolen car while in possession of 10,000 grams of amphetamine worth an estimated 90,000 pounds. In the fall of 2018, Fricker was jailed for 13 years after he admitted Robin Hamilton, as well as the unrelated offense of possessing drugs with intent to supply. Number 6. Brooklyn Crew U.S. federal authorities came down upon a major heroin distribution operation, resulting in multiple arrests in the summer of 2017. Charged with the narcotics trafficking conspiracy were members of a gang based in Brooklyn, New York City, namely Victor Agosto, also known as Bebo, Perfecto Fec de Leon, Luis Lu Lopez, and Andres Dre Reyes, along with Nesta Rivera, also known as Tito or Tito Bird, and Peter Vasquez. The arrests represented the culmination of a long-term investigation led by the NYPD and the FBI. The Brooklyn crew reportedly had Mexican cartel connections and funneled drugs through Chicago, Los Angeles, and New York. For protection of the operation, they relied on the Young Gunners, also known as the YGs, a violent street gang based in the Bushwick section of Brooklyn. As law enforcement dismantled the crew's operation, they seized 12 kilos of heroin worth nearly $1 million as well as multiple luxury vehicles including a Rolls-Royce Ghost and a Lamborghini Huracan, owned by Vasquez and Lopez respectively. William Sweeney, assistant director in charge of the FBI's New York field office, told the media that through their heroin operation, the defendants not only lived a sham lavish life, but trafficked hundreds of kilograms of this deadly drug in New York City. The members' spending was amply documented on their social media with ostentatious displays of wealth that raised the crew's visibility for law enforcement. Lopez often posted photos of his jewelry, which included massive gold bracelets and gold chains, in addition to an Audemars Peugeot watch worth an estimated $20,000. Agosto was known to flaunt designer clothes. The crew also lavished their family members with expensive gifts with Vasquez buying a Porsche Cayenne for his mother and Lopez purchasing a $3,000 Versace stroller for his infant son. The drug traffickers also documented their lavish holidays, uploading videos and photos from their waterfront rentals in Miami or while they were out on yachts and jet skis. Many of the crew's ill-gotten possessions would be subjected to forfeiture 
and each of the men faced a minimum of 10 years to life behind bars if convicted. Number 5. Brian Xavier Salazar On June the 30th of 2022, a Hyundai Sonata was reported stolen to the Bexar County Sheriff's Office in Texas. Deputies subsequently found the vehicle abandoned in the 9300 block of Garnet Street near Loop 410 and Mawson Boulevard in San Antonio. While processing the vehicle, investigators discovered a receipt from El Taco Grill and followed up on the lead. They were thus able to recover surveillance footage of teenager Brian Xavier Salazar operating the stolen Hyundai. Deputies obtained an arrest warrant for him and subsequently took the teenager into custody. After a brief foot chase, some of Salazar's social media photos showed him posing menacingly with handguns that had high-capacity ammunition clips. The teenager became the target of widespread ridicule when the sheriff's office announced his arrest on Facebook. Officials included his previous photos that contrast one taken of him moments after his capture, looking dirty and disheveled with the caption, went from flexing to this. Salazar was charged with unauthorized use of a motor vehicle and evading arrest, for which he was booked into Bexar County Jail on a $6,500 bond. Number 4. Hamdan Al-Rind In July of 2023, Hamdan Al-Rind was arrested on multiple counts in Dubai for a TikTok video in which he mocked wealthy Emiratis' spontaneous supercar spending sprees. Al Rind, who had over 2.7 million followers on the platform, ran his own auto dealership in the United Arab Emirates and referred to himself as the car expert. In the clip that led to his arrest, Al Rind stormed into the luxury supercar rentals Dubai showroom clad in a Kandura the traditional garb worn by Emirati men while wearing sunglasses and a surgical mask, with a huge stack of cash carried behind him by two employees, he demanded to see the boss. Al Rind then made contact with the owner, Ahmed Mansour, humble bragging that he had a small budget before pointing to the pile of money. He then asked Mansour to show him the most expensive vehicle. The owner presented Al Rind with a Ferrari SF90 worth over half a million dollars. But the latter mocked the choice saying, I need more expensive brother, I don't need this, this is what my driver will drive. Twice in the video, Al Rind was seen throwing stacks of money at employees and telling them it was for coffee. During the fake spending spree, Al Rind pointed to several vehicles including an Audi R8 a Mercedes and a Rolls Royce, saying that he wanted them. As he plucked a stack from the money pile, he told Mansour that he also wanted a Red Bull. When Mansour replied that the drink was on the house, Al Rind slapped the cash in his hand saying, take money, no problem, keep the change. The prankster, whom the authorities described as an Asian national, resided in the UAE was taken into custody. The public prosecution also summoned Mansour, who maintained that he thought Al Rind was a legitimate buyer. A cybercrime law enacted by the UAE in January of 2022 criminalized virtually any form of expression that the state deemed damaging to its reputation. The law, which was condemned by multiple human rights groups, reportedly offered no solid guidelines as to what was forbidden. Al Rin's social media flexing, albeit fabricated, was deemed to be in violation of the law. While it remained unclear what the legal consequences of his actions would be, Al Rin stood accused of promoting a false and derogatory mental image of the country's citizens, mocking them and thereby inciting and arousing public opinion to the detriment of public interest. Al Rin's satire was arguably rooted in reality as a number of Emiratis had posted lavish displays of wealth to their social media in recent years, from impromptu purchases of luxury items to driving around in convertible sports cars with exotic pets such as lions or cheetahs as passengers. 
However, the state generally adopted a sterner stance on similar behavior from foreigners. Number 3. Eleonora in Cardona Italian influencer Eleonora in Cardona regularly took to Instagram to share with her followers, numbering close to 500,000, details about her luxurious lifestyle. The 31-year-old posted photos and videos that showed where she kept her jewelry, designer handbags, and accessories inside her Milan home. In one photo, in Cardona, wore several pricey gold bracelets and chains while flashing two luxury watches placed on the same arm, writing that she couldn't decide which she liked better. On a Saturday in December of 2020, in Cardona announced to her followers that everyone, including her pet chihuahua, Oliver, had left her home. Unbeknownst to her, she was being monitored by a gang of burglars known to local law enforcement as the Acrobat Thieves due to their skills at scaling buildings to reach the homes of their targets, who usually consisted of Milan's VIPs. A video posted by In Cardona's roommate that same day captured a man in a dark coat talking on a cell phone while standing on a sidewalk in the background. He would later be revealed to have been part of the crew that had been casing her home and tracking her activity on social media. Once the influencer and her roommate had cleared the area, the thieves sprang into action. They climbed the wall into In Cardona's home and made off with her Chanel and Louis Vuitton handbags, as well as jewelry items. Marco Cali, chief of the unit investigating the acrobat thieves, would note that the influencer had offered an assist to the burglars by posting where she kept her valuables. Prosecutor Francesca Krupi noted that it was one of the clearest cases of criminals using Instagram as a research and monitoring tool in their criminal activity. Krupi urged the public, the message is that you must not publish stuff. In Cardona wasn't the only victim of the four-man crew, whom Krupi described as young and fit guys dressed like they were going to a Milan nightclub. They'd also burglarized TV presenter Diletta Liotta's home, stealing Rolex watches, cash from her safe and jewelry. They once again relied on their climbing skills in the process as they reached a terrace before descending two floors into Liotta's residence. The crew was eventually arrested in February of 2021 after the police's investigation had gathered abundant evidence consisting of surveillance photos showing them in the act stolen goods found in their possession and a wiretapped conversation in which they discussed in Cardona and their other targets. Reacting to the heist, the influencer stated, looks like the thieves also appreciated my pictures with my pretty things, but pledged to change her habits so as to avoid such incidents in the future. Today's topic was requested by Liza Blue 0608. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Ramirez Gang Started in February of 2013 and up to mid-2014, a gang of thieves from Long Beach, California stole over a million dollars in gold bars, jewelry, and luxury watches. The lucrative operation was led by brothers Salvador and Ivan Ramirez, both in their 20s, along with several accomplices. The gang raided over 100 homes, sometimes at a rate of two per week, primarily targeting members of the Indian community as they were known to traditionally wear gold during religious ceremonies and cultural events. The gang would find their victims by browsing open source information online, then scout specific homes. They typically dressed in expensive outfits and drove newer model cars to avoid raising suspicions in the targeted neighborhood. After using prepaid cell phones to call and ensure no one was home, they forced their way inside the residences. The thefts stretched from Orange, Los Angeles, Ventura, and San Bernardino counties to addresses in Northern California and Nevada. In spite of being meticulous during the heist, as they never left any fingerprints or DNA evidence, 
the gang's online boasting of their ill-gotten loot would prove to be their downfall. In addition to posing with stacks of cash, the thieves also posted photos of gold bars and of themselves wherein the jewelry they'd pilfered. It was through the posts that law enforcement tracked them down and made the arrests. The Ramirez brothers were charged with leading a criminal conspiracy, as were their accomplices, 24-year-old Albaro Miranda and Juan Guerrero, aged 22. As of the latest updates on the matter, the police were searching for four other young men who'd been working with the gang. Right after number one, we'll line up dumbass criminals whose bragging got them caught. Stick around if you missed that one. Number 1. Dragos Savulescu By 2021, Romanian businessman Dragos Savulescu had an active warrant out for a land fraud case dating back to the early 2000s. The warrant had been released by Romanian authorities based on Savulescu's 2019 conviction to five and a half years in prison. Savulescu was accused of being part of a criminal group which included the former mayor of the seaside city of Constantia, believed to have caused the state 112 million euros in damages. The case involved Savulescu and his associates illegally acquiring the succession rights to vast properties in Constantia from elderly heiress Yvonne Aline Bushescu Movilia, in spite of having no familial connection to her. Aside from his shady land dealings, Shavalescu had once been a major shareholder in soccer club FC Dinamo, as well as a film producer and actor appearing alongside Kevin Costner and Ryan Reynolds in the 2016 movie Criminal. In the aftermath of his conviction, Shavalescu didn't show up to Romanian court to serve his sentence and fled to Italy, where he surrendered to Naples law enforcement in early 2020. The Italian government, however, refused to extradite him, opting for a suspended sentence that allowed him to travel freely. Shavalescu's Romanian-issued warrant was still active and he was a wanted man, but his subsequent whereabouts remained a mystery. Shavalescu was at the time romantically involved with Albanian-Swiss supermodel Angela Martini, whom he'd married in Las Vegas in 2017. It was through her social media posts that in the summer of 2021, the authorities learned Shavalescu was vacationing on the Greek island of Mykonos. Martini's posts showed them posing in a luxury hotel room and having a meal with friends at a local restaurant. Shavalescu was additionally spotted in posts from the couple's entourage, further confirming his presence on the island. A plain-clothed police officer obtained a confirmation of Shavalescu's identity while he was out at a restaurant. In the moments that followed, the convicted con man was arrested in front of his partner and their friends. Romanian prosecutors again pressed for extradition, but the Greek authorities refused. 2022 updates on the matter indicated that Shavalescu's flight from justice continued and that he and Martini had returned to their home in Milan unimpeded. Eagleville resident Jayanna Tane Webb was accused of third-degree murder, homicide by vehicle and DUI after fatally colliding with two Pennsylvania state troopers and a civilian shortly after 12.30 a.m. on March the 21st of 2022. The harrowing incident took place along Interstate 95 in the area of Milepost 18, north of Broad Street. At the time, troopers Martin Mack III and Brandon Siska were trying to detain a male suspect. While traveling at high speeds, Webb attempted to pass the parked state police SUV but collided with the defenseless pedestrians, sending them over the median. Witnesses attempted to perform CPR on the victims, but Mack, Siska and the civilian, identified as 28-year-old Reyes Rivera Oliveras, were pronounced dead at the scene. According to police, Webb's blood alcohol concentration was 0.211 and surveillance video showed that she'd been swerving prior to the crash. The deadly incident wasn't the first time the 21-year-old had been accused of driving while intoxicated. She had previously bragged about speeding and driving drunk on Twitter, saying, if you ask me, I'm the best drunk driver ever. Webb was arrested but posted 10% of her $600,000 bail on September the 14th. As of the latest updates, Webb was awaiting trial. Number nine, Levi Watson. In 2016, 29-year-old Englishman Levi Watson posted a string of boastful photos on social media while he was part of a Midlands drug ring. 
Watson claimed to have no income while living a quiet life in Wolverhampton when police questioned him about his involvement in the drug trade. Through a series of Instagram pictures posted by Watson in August of 2016, investigators discovered his lavish lifestyle. Photos of the man enjoying a helicopter ride, posing on the bonnet of a white Ferrari and bathing in a bubble bath surrounded by bank notes. Following a massive drug bust by West Midlands police, Watson was jailed on September the 9th alongside 12 others. He pleaded guilty to conspiracy to supply Class A drugs and was sentenced to seven years behind bars. Number 8. Long Beach Gang A Long Beach gang that stole at least a million dollars worth of jewelry, gold and watches from approximately 100 homes in 2013 was rounded up by law enforcement after posting braggadocious pictures online. The gang had reportedly committed an average of two burglaries per week beginning in the month of February. Authorities indicated the group was responsible for home invasions spanning several counties, namely Orange, Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Ventura, North Carolina, and Nevada. The suspects targeted members of the Indian community, primarily taking gold, watches, and jewelry. Investigators found no DNA or fingerprints at any of the crime scenes, but they were able to track the gang online. Members of the group posted pictures of themselves in which they showcased the items they stole. Salvador Ramirez, Albaro Miranda, Ivan Ramirez, and Juan Guerrero at the time in their early 20s, as well as 57-year-old Teresa Ramirez, were taken into custody for criminal conspiracy. As of the latest updates, law enforcement was still in search of Marco Coronel, Aaron Flores, Marco Gonzalez, and Juan Carlos Olagu, all in their early 20s. Number 7. London Robbers In the winter of 2022, six British men who targeted people's luxury watches were caught after posing for pictures with the stolen timepieces. The group robbed people in Chelsea, one of London's most affluent areas, taking watches worth up to $42,000. The suspects used large knives or machetes to threaten their targets, some of whom were left with physical injuries after being accosted. When 18-year-old Jesse Uma was arrested in January of 2023, police found incriminating pictures of his accomplices in his phone. The photos showed 19-year-old Kai Juan Henry and Roshan Clark, aged 18, wearing a number of the stolen items. The suspects were apprehended following a joint operation among several law enforcement agencies, but none of the stolen items were recovered. Zachariah Yusuf, Joseph Opoku, both aged 19, pleaded guilty to their involvement, as did Clark. They were respectively sentenced to 30 months, 36 months, and 45 months behind bars. Uma, Henry, and 29-year-old Michael Malik Ahmed also pleaded guilty to the burglaries. They were given 48 months, 72 months, and 81 months of incarceration, respectively. Number 6. Ryan McTie a man breached the terms of his parole and flaunted his freedom by posting on social media about taking trips to music festivals in Coventry, England. Ryan McTie was sentenced to a six-year sentence for robbery in 2011, but was granted early release in May of 2016. The 30-year-old posted pictures of himself at the Ibiza Carnival and Creamfields, which violated the conditions of his release. He was consequently dubbed the Festival Fugitive. In December, McTie explained his decision to go on the run, saying that he didn't appreciate being placed in the same category as other criminals, claiming he hadn't committed any offense. McTie was apprehended in a residential area called Holbrooks at around 2.30 p.m. on July the 4th of 2017. In addition to absconding from parole, the man was accused of cultivating cannabis. Number 5. Peter Johnson and Vincent Israel on the evening of October the 14th of 2020, a pair of fugitives were taken back into custody after bragging about their escape from HM Prison Sudbury in Derbyshire, England. 31-year-old Vincent Israel and Peter Johnson, aged 29, who were serving time for larceny, scaled the prison's perimeter fence and managed to escape. They subsequently drove 50 miles to a pub in Kettering, Northamptonshire, where they shared celebratory drinks. A patron overheard them boasted about breaking out of jail and called the police shortly before 10 p.m. When officers arrived, the escapees made a run for it, but Johnson was detained right away. Israel was later found roughly nine miles away, hiding in between two vehicles. 
Officers took him to a hospital for significant injuries to his feet, which he sustained after jumping over a five-foot fence, according to prosecutors. In the aftermath, both men pleaded guilty to escaping from lawful custody at Northampton Crown Court. Four months were added to Johnson's sentence of 29 months and Israel's 46-month sentence. Number 4. Brooklyn Fraudsters in Brooklyn, New York, a group of eight male suspects who ranged between the ages of 18 and 25 posed in pictures with millions worth of stolen COVID funds. According to court records, Brian Abraham, Carlos Vasquez, Hangel Cabrera, Gianni Stewart, Andre Ruddock, Seth Golden, Armani Miller, and Johan Santos stole personal information from people in COVID assistance programs and funneled cash into their own bank accounts. From June of 2020 to April of 2021, they subsequently withdrew the money at banks located in Brooklyn and Queens, then posted pictures of themselves posing with stacks of cash on social media. The suspects were caught with 100 key bank debit cards in the names of other people. In May of 2021, they were all indicted in federal court for conspiracy to commit access device fraud, having allegedly stolen $2 million in total. Six of the young men were arrested while Miller and Santos remained at large as of the latest updates. Number 3. Katia Chapel. During the early hours of Thanksgiving Day in 2021, two women were shot by 28-year-old Katia Chapel along the 1200 block of Elmwood Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio. The gruesome incident unfolded shortly after 2 a.m. when Chapel got into a verbal altercation with the two females who were sitting in a vehicle parked outside a metal coating and plant company. The situation escalated and Chapel opened fire, leaving 29-year-old Dominique Johnson dead. The other victim fortunately survived. Chapel bragged about the shooting on social media while she was on the run. On January the 10th of the following year, she was taken into custody in Maple Heights by the Northern Ohio Violent Fugitive Task Force. She was booked at the county detention facility on a $1 million bond facing several charges that included aggravated murder, attempted murder, felonious assault, tampering with evidence, and carrying concealed weapons. Chapel was ultimately found guilty on all counts. On March the 16th of 2023, she was sentenced to life with parole eligibility after 43 and a half years. Number 2. Aaron Burrell, Yvonne Thyberg, and Marvin Myers in the wake of a burglary at a home in Roswell, New Mexico in 2014. The trio responsible accidentally called 911 while bragging about the crime. Authorities heard the conversation between Aaron Burrell, Yvonne Thyberg, and Marvin Myers about stealing a television valued at $4,500. During the course of the inadvertent call, which lasted almost an hour, the suspects gave the address of the home and detailed their escape. When officers were dispatched, they confirmed that the home located in the 300 block of East Hervey Drive had indeed been burglarized. 37-year-old Burrell, 35-year-old Thyberg, and Myers, aged 30, were consequently arrested and charged with burglary. Number 1. Tanya Monique Peel A woman wanted for a bank fraud scam that occurred in December of 2013 posted suggestive Facebook selfies which police used to determine her identity. Tanya Monique Peel from Raleigh, North Carolina, set up a business account at a J.P. Morgan Chase bank in Atlanta. The 26-year-old and her accomplices allegedly stole the identity of a 45-year-old Charles Schwab client named Terence Fowler and transferred $123,000 from his account to Peel's phony business account on December the 19th, when Charles Schwab representatives called Fowler to confirm the authorization for transfers, they ended up talking to one of the fraudsters, who pretended to be him and approved the transfers. According to investigators, Peel then immediately withdrew all the money from the account. Additionally, $52,000 was stolen from Fowler and transferred to a Wells Fargo branch in California. The money was immediately frozen before it could be removed from the account. Fortunately for Fowler, the bank refunded the stolen sum. Authorities began investigating the matter when Fowler reported the theft to the police. Peel reportedly used her real name on the account used in the scheme, and when police found the name on Facebook, her selfies matched the suspect recorded by bank surveillance cameras. Peel was arrested on July the 24th of 2014, charged with felony theft by taking. She was booked at the Fulton County Jail on a $50,000 bond. Thanks for watching. Would you rather give up social media and get $1,000 a month 
or be part of a permanent 24-hour live stream for $10,000 a month? Let us know in the comments section below.